This is yesterday's news. I am Joe Vester, and this is Curtis the Bearheart here. I mean, Curtis Bearheart here. I mean, and this is yesterday's news. And we have a story for you right now on the AP News. The story is open, kids. Yes. And this story is from Augusta, Maine. And I believe it's in the United States. Yeah, that sounds about right. Maybe in a parallel reality. Yes, may maybe, but let's get to the story. Certainly. Animal control officers, nearby helpers, catch loose chicken. A main animal control officer has been on a mission to find a loose chicken when he decided to whack a few branches, exposing a black ball foil. Well, how, how, how do you pronounce that word, Bert? F-O-W-L. That's foul, which that's is, foul. yeah, that's the foul referring to foul as an avian life form. Wow. Yeah, oh. fair nor fair nor foul. You know what I mean? I mean, no, that's not it. I guess something was going on that it was foul. No, it was a foul because it was a chicken. There ain't nothing foul like the other foul going on yet. Yeah, that's this much. If, if, if it's a chicken, you know, it, it's got to be up to some foul business to. Beyond the loose. I don't know, but I sure wish we had some buffalo sauce for that chicken. Let's ultimately find out how its goose was cooked. KFC. Mm. Good chicken. Yeah, uh, it's all right. I like churches better. Popeyes, Kennedy, pretty much anything. Yeah, Pathmark. Yeah, yeah, oh, wait, yeah. Pathmark doesn't exist anymore. That's right. Look at Black fell lurking below. Yeah. I wonder if they were catching the chicken just to eat the chicken. Well, I'm waiting to find that out. Hopefully we figure it out here. Okay, let's just get to it. Chicken fricassee, you know, uh, fried chicken, chicken cacciatore. You ever have that? I had, I had a Real chicken parmesan. That's a good chicken. Yeah, this chicken is already doomed. I don't know. Something terrible is going to happen to it. I mean, just think. I'll this try is, not to unless I have to. This is this is around uh, Thanksgiving uh, when we're doing this podcast. And, uh, you know, thinking of chicken, I think of turkey. Well, that's another foul. Yes, it's a foul. Okay. The Kennedy Journal reports that Paul Fry on Thursday solicited the help of another officer and two nearby citizens to wrangle the bird, saying it took four people to not look stupid doing it. I don't believe them. I think they probably look real stupid doing it. You get a big blanket, you throw it over the top of them. What's the big deal? I don't get it. Now, now I have a question to ask. Well, I suppose now's the time. Normally, I would ask, is this a good idea or is it a bad idea? But here's the question I'm going to say. I'm going to have another variation. Is this a stupid idea or is this a not a stupid idea? Well, I don't know. I mean, you got to catch the chicken. I'm not going to say it's a stupid idea. I'd just like to know how they went about catching the chicken. Did they dive all over the place in mud and stuff or did they, did they use a net? You know, did they use a blowgun? Did they hire a gang? Like, how did they get the chicken? Does the article say how they got the chicken? We will find out. Because I'd take a nice big king-size sheet, and I'd wait for that dummy to come out in the open, and I'd throw it over the top of him, and you roll the dice just right, you should be able to get him. Right, right now we know that these people feel like they're looking stupid catching a chicken. I'm imagining they look very stupid, yes. That's, I can see it clearly in the muse of my 
Just like my brother Ricky says, the muse in my mind. I can see they look very stupid catching that chicken. Yes. You know, when I think of catching chickens, I remember Rocky. <laughs> the movie Rocky, where Mickey <laughs> wanted him to catch the chicken. So he was running around aimlessly trying to catch this fast chicken. You gotta catch your chicken, Rock. <laughs> you gotta go get him. Get him, you, you SOB. Yeah, I remember all that. That was pretty nice. Mick, yeah. Mick, Mick was a heck of a trainer, I'll tell you. Yeah, it's very good. One of the best. I could probably collapse in a heap if I tried to chase the chicken. I don't know why I'm being so critical. Oh. I haven't seen my toad since 1993. I won't talk about that. <laughs> no, no, there's no comment justified or needed or warranted or any of those magic words. Okay, the, the, the bird was captured. And, and I hear the bird was the word, too. The bird is the word? No? The bird is the word, the word is the bird, the bird is the word. Yeah, all right, um, well, we starting get, to sound like a priest. Getting that double talk going. I don't know what's going on here. The bird was captured and is being cared for at Officer Brad Chase's home. Please say... It had been roaming the area for weeks. <laughs> Man, we don't know what we're going to do about this chicken. It's the, da the danger to the community is chicken running around. You got to be careful. They're not sure who it belongs to. Boop, 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 boop. Hey, kids, want to buy some... Want to buy some... Are they worried about a drug dealer chicken? What's going on here? What happens when... I'm starting to turn it to Tone Wolf there for a second. Um, Let's what, hope not. What, what I mean, happens if this to Grab chicken, something heavy? Uh, get ready to swing? I mean, no. Well, what, what happens if this uh, chicken... Roams around town and you know, no one just notices, and it's just roaming and roaming. And do they even like what? Well, what do these people do? I don't know. I mean, if the chicken's not missed, then why even call the police? I don't understand it. It's a free range chicken at that point. Again, king size sheet, catch him, ask him what his problem is. Tell him, you know, are we willing to give him a ride home? Oh, you have no home, sir. Well, guess what? It's time to go in my tummy. Yes. You're roaming around, think about it. No, no, there's vegetarians and vegans out there that are going to give me a big hassle. But, uh, you know. Well, I would just say, how does that chicken feel Oof. when its head just got chopped up? Oh. Oh, gee whiz. Well, I imagine it's not going to feel very much of anything because his head's gone. But, um, There's this little thing called the central nervous system. I'm not I'm not, I'm not too sure how it works, but... As a matter of fact, I think I had chicken the other day. Yeah, you probably had chicken about 40 minutes ago, if I remember correctly. But that's another story. <laughs> <laughs> what, are we keeping it from the Russians? I don't get it. What do you, what do you mean, chicken? Where is this? Joe Vector, are you alright? Are you wearing a wire? Is this being recorded? Oh, wait, it is. That's right. That's what we do here. Okay, let's get to the finishing of the story. Yeah, I'm done with this chicken, man. I want to be able to figure this out. Ron says the department has received more calls about loose chickens in recent years because... An errant chicken. Because more people are raising birds at... Home farms. Chase had to catch another chicken in March. Why would people be raising their own birds? It's almost as though they have no faith in the chickens that are raised by our pharmacological industrial complex. Hmm, fascinating. It is fascinating. By fascinating, I mean it's painfully obvious that something's going on. Yes. Painfully obvious. Especially for the chicken. That's what we wish 
that check in the best if he found a new if he found a new home then Godspeed to the chicken. Godspeed chicken. Yeah. Now we are taking to our next story. Uh, buckle up kids. That first one left me winded. This one is <coughs> me feasting in Italian at a museum. Feasting Italian? Are you ready for the story? I think I I think I'm ready. Okay. This is from New York City and it is by Gary Gerard Hamilton and it is called Eat Your Heart Out at the Pizza Museum. Pizza Museum. November sixth, two thousand and eighteen. Oh man. New York. It's amazing. And this is AP News. Well, yeah, I would imagine. There is now a museum for pizza lovers everywhere that's popped up in arguably America's pizza capital. And that is New York City. Fair enough. They got good pie in Philly, too. You know, I mean, I'm not going to say that New York's not the capital, it's just, you know. Well, you know. I've had pizza from all over the place, kids, and uh, I feel entitled to a little bit of an opinion on the subject. What's your best pizza that you've had in places? Well, local around these parts, there's this joint called Scorantino. Anybody that knows about that place already knows how good that is. I also prefer, if we're going a little further away, this joint called Cafaro's. Cafaro's is good. Um, but, you know, I like all kinds of pizza. Local, foreign. I had Philly pie. I had New York pie. Boardwalk pizza. Uh, Chicago pizza. Uh, frozen pizza. Uh, you know, there, every kind of pizza is great. Homemade. Everywhere I'm from, uh, I like San Remo pizza. I like uh, Angelo's pizza. You know some some other pizza places too. Pizza time had good memories there. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure you have. Yes, I have. Excellent. Yes. So. Where's, where's I mean, it's less good memories and more delicious pizza that I'm interested in. I had good pizza there, too. That's the thing we're really talking about. Now, about this pizza museum, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Vector, if you please, uh, if you please expand on that for a moment. Just, just call me Joe. Joe. See? See how humble, see how humble he is, kid? Unbelievable. This man could fetch you the horizon. You're uh, here in what you're in, great. All right, Mr. Vector, go ahead. <laughs> The Museum of Pizza is dedicated to all things cheese and sauce, but there is more to it than meets the tongue. That's right, this author said, or this writer said, there's more to it than meets the tongue. More than meets the tongue. I don't know, what is that? Uh, more than meets the tongue. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's often that the simplest ideas are the best. And we wanted to use pizza's ubiquitous appeal to get people through the door and looking at art and hearing about history in a different format, said Alexandra Serio, Chief Content Officer at Nameless Network, the group that baked the Museum of Pizza idea. So, it's not a museum about pizza, it's pizza at a museum? Is that what I'm getting with? 
So they have pizza at a museum to make people go see the museum, but they don't actually have a pizza museum. Am I am I correct in that statement? Maybe. Well, what does it say? I mean, obviously. They have pizza at a museum, and they have art of pizza at the museum of pizza. Could you check that out? Because I'm real confused. You know what? It's funny you say that. I am going to look up... I'm about half as confused as Totem Wolf is, which is really, really confused. I'm not sure what's going on. We have... We have a computer. Do ya? In the studio. We got a couple of them floating around. I am going to... It's like uh, the watchtower in this place. It's unbelievable. I am going to go to the official website of the Museum of Pizza. And, oh, well... And, and for, for those who are listening... We are doing a plug for the Museum of Pizza right now. Well, I guess we are. I can't say if it's good or bad. I can just say that it is. Uh, this is just... Um, this is just... <coughs> what? What's going on? This is just horrible. What do you mean? Now I'm scared. Uh, First of all, we don't know what's going on. It feels like we've been reading this story for at least ten minutes. Uh, I have no idea what's happening. Uh, How could it get worse? How could it get worse? It's just supposed to be a pizza museum. Look at some of the pictures on the website. I gotta. Um, I don't know what that is. Are you sure you're at the right place? I'm sure that I... I don't think he's at the right place. I'm not sure this, this is on. the other picture. This is terrible. No, it's not the right place. No, well, maybe it is. I don't know. No, no, no. See, the thing is, this is uh, what it says. Uh, they're not even wearing pizza. I don't believe this. This is what it says. The Museum of Pizza. And the A is upside down. Why is the A upside down? I don't know why the A is upside down. Well, we're looking at the website. And it's like, uh, Let's just continue the story and get done with it. I certainly hope so. Okay. Our approach to this museum is a fine art approach. I guess from the website it says fine art, so... So it's an art museum that serves pizza, right? Right? Isn't that what it is? Is that what it says? It serves pizza, but there is art of pizza. But it's not all art of pizza. It's fancy art. Yeah, but that doesn't answer my question at all. Never mind, just keep reading the story. I may never know what the hell is going on in this story. Okay. Um, approach. So, we went out to multiple artists, contemporary in many mediums, and ask them for their interpretation of pizza. Lucerio and what we got back is it it ranges the gamut. Let's just say that that's an understatement. Located on the street level Brooklyn's William Bell Hotel, the museum, the, the museum is an expansive one-floor space that houses a variety of art, art, from giant photographs, sculptures, to large installations that engulf visitors, and the pop-up museum, also known as Mopi has already drawn a lot of interest. More than 6,000 people came through the doors when they opened this one. Alright. There's more to the story, but 
But my um, brain, but my brain is already crusting over. So well, let's just say there's more to this story, but I'm done with the story. I was done with this story. <laughs> They're just bringing pizza into art. Art is cool. Pizza's cool. I, that sounds like a great idea. It's just uh, I mean, they have they have one good picture here, and I, I've got to sh- if, if I had this detail, this. I would much rather it be something like Colonial Pizza Bird, where they make pizzas fresh, the old-fashioned way, right in front of your eyes. Well, let, let's, let's just say this. They throw the dirt up in the air. I mean, the the, the, the dough up in the air from the dirt. and there, there, is, there, is one, there is one story, or there is one picture that they show, and, you know... I have to mention the website didn't serve the website as the museum justice, but this picture does. And it is called the photo that shows the pizza guitar from musician Andrew W.K. at the Museum of Pizza in New York. AP photo. Roberto Matthews. And I'm going to pass the phone over, not the phone, the news report over to, uh, Kurt. Mm. And he's going to look at... Uh, oh, it's fascinating. It's a guitar that's shaped like an upswept slice of pizza with the works on it. Pepperoni, mushroom, peppers, onion. And I'd love to know how that guitar sounds and how that pizza tastes. Simultaneously. You know what I mean, kids? Wouldn't you love to eat your music? Yes. Yes, come to think of it, I would love to eat my music. This is Yesterday's News with Joe Vexter and Curtis the Bearheart, otherwise known as Curtis Bearheart. I am from originally the Okanos Network before I was viciously kicked out from. I mean, no, I was sent here as an emissary. To tell you all about uh, the Okanuts uh, brand. And uh, basically, uh, what's going on over there is we got a bunch of channels of podcasting, and we're a parallel brand to the Joseph Evaldi brand. One of our channels is uh, for audiobooks, Oakwood Daftarity, Malphoria Volume 1, Quantum Posey, Machinations of the Cybernetic Phantom God, the Spoken Word CD, real creepy uh, stuff, not for the faint of heart. And speaking of faint of heart, Temporality, Shadow, Paranormal, Ghosty Stuff, The Okanuts Network, Audiobooks, Poetry, Spoken Word, uh, what is it, Talk, uh, Paranormal Investigation, Game Design, The Okanuts Network, A Creative Baptism for Every Day. Check us out on Spreaker.com, go to Amazon Kindle, you're going to have a bunch of books up there, and uh, help the brand along, kids. This is Joe Vector Race Reporter. That's amazing. And I am given the right to plug for Joseph Vivaldi and his friend. And I have to say, me being Joe Vector, I want to say we have video cast coming next month, meeting video on YouTube, and we will have good content for the Joseph Evaldi Network. We have a book coming out on the Kindle, it's called The Book of Seasons, The Journey Through the Year's Cycle, and we have an audio book coming out soon, uh, maybe as late as December or January, but it, it is coming out. So, good things in store for the network, including these podcasts that we have out right now on the Joseph Evaldi Network. So, without further ado, let's get back to... Yesterday's news. Yep, that was nice. 
So what's the next story there, uh, Joe Vector? This is an interesting story. Mm. And a historic story. Oh, we're going right to that. Ha, no, not historic. Well, we chased a chicken and we went to a pizza museum, so not, not, I'm going out of my mind wondering what's coming next. Not, not the historic news story, but that's coming at the end. But this is like, how would you like to feel about owning a piece of history? Oh, well, that's different. Depends on what it is. This is the new story from London, and it is AAP News. This story is called Stephen Hawking's Wheelchair Sells for $393,000 at an auction. Wow. Well, that certainly is a piece of history, isn't it? Imagine, imagine owning that chair. I mean, this is the chair that kept Stephen Hawking alive. This is the chair that kept him writing. This is the chair that kept him in his vision going, even after he couldn't go anymore. I mean, that's, that's impressive. Well, I'm sure it had the whole vocal apparatus on there, too, like as far as his voice, like, um, yes. Hey, kids, you're going to tell me something, I'm going to tell you something, you know, like that kind of stuff. So that's the part that's really cool, is that it has his voice, the voice, uh, uh, what is it, uh, what do they call that thing? Voice apparatus? Yeah, yeah. That's somebody can, that means somebody can sound like, even Hawking. Well, you could do that with the internet, but the point is, is that that's the that's the chair. Yeah. That's that's the that's the highest paying wheelchair in in the world, I think, right now. That 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 chair. I don't know whose chair is more famous than his. That's my thing. I mean, highest paying probably, but. Who's, who's chair, whose wheelchair is more famous than his? Well, let's just get to the story. Oh, then like FDR, but that was a long time ago. FDR had a good chair for you. Well, that's what I'm saying, though. So, I mean, yeah, you got to look at it by your, your chairs in history. Yeah, yeah, he had a big chair he played, yeah. Yep. When he uh, climbed out from the wheelchair after Pearl Harbor, and he made that announcement. It was the tide that turned in World War Two. Yeah, uh, I'm not. I don't remember that part. He was in a chair that early. Yeah, he was in a chair, but the thing is, he didn't want to. He didn't want to be in the chair for that speech. So what he did was, he got out of his chair. He walked. All the way down the aisle, and don't forget he had polio. So he walked all the way down until he got to the stage and said his speech. It's kind of like, in a way, of his uncle, I think, uncle and cousin uh, Peter Roosevelt, how he got shot and he carried out that speech. He did some road feet by walking. Now and the point is, is he wasn't going to let a uh, little thing like a like a childhood disease or a bullet keep him down. No, no, no. Okay, here is the story. After I, this is the story. A wheelchair used by physicist Stephen Hawking has sold at auction for almost 300,000 pounds. That is $393,000 U.S. month. While a copy of his doctoral thesis fetched almost 
585,000 pounds, that is 767,000 dollars. Auctioneer Christine said Thursday. The motorized chair used by Hawking after he was paralyzed with motor neuron disease raised two hundred ninety six thousand seven hundred fifty pounds in a Christie's online auction. It had been expected to fetch up to fifteen thousand pounds. Needless to say, they raised lots of pounds. Yeah, well money. Lots and lots of money. Uh, I guess that's okay, you know. Uh, why not? That's what auctions are for. Yes. Proceeds for the chair sales will go to two charities. The Stephen Hawking Foundation and the Motor Neuron Disease Association. Hawking's 1965 Cambridge University thesis. Properties of expanding universes sold for five hundred eighty four thousand seven hundred fifty pounds. More than two more than three times its pre sale estimate in the online auction. Wow. And I have more of the story. Diagnosed with Motor neuron disease at 22 and given just a few years to live, Hawking instead defied the odds and died in March at the age of 76. He expanded scientific thinking about black holes and the origins of the universe and attained Celebrity status, writing best-selling books, and guest starring on The Simpsons. Yeah, among other things, he was on Star Trek too. Everybody knows what everybody knew who Stephen Hawking was. He was a global, global personality, household name since the '80s. His book, A Brief History of Time, I believe, was featured in many, many pop culture references. Wasn't he also on that show, Big Bang Theory? And maybe so. A script from one of his appearances on the animated TV show sold for six thousand two hundred fifty pounds in the sale of twenty two hawking items, while a collection of his medals and awards raised Two hundred ninety six thousand seven hundred fifty pounds. Do I say that again? Up to you. Two hundred ninety six thousand seven hundred fifty pounds. Could you say, could you talk like that again, except talk about The Undertaker and Yokozuna? Just really quick, just so I hear what that sounds like. Now about to enter the ring. Weighing in at 650 pounds. From Japan, Yokozuna. Yeah, that was his character. I mean, the guy was Samoa, that's what I heard. Versus from... Death Valley. No, no, that's that's uh, Cactus Jack. Never oh, mind. The Unknown. <laughs> the Undertaker. Well, you were doing it like the announcer, but I mean, it sounds a lot more like Paul Bearer to me. I don't know. I was hoping he would threat Yokozuna and tell him how the Undertaker was going to put him in a casket. But never mind. Never mind. Let's go on to the next story. <laughs> You're the high pitched Okay. Yeah. Well, well, 
I don't know how we got into the Young Undertaker and Yokozuna when we're talking about Stephen Hawking. It's just well, the reason why know. is the pitch of your voice reminded me of the uh, uh, the promoter uh, or manager Paul Bearer for a moment there, and I was oh, disoriented. Sorry. That's why it was. Sorry about that. <laughs> Didn't mean to uh, insinuate the other thing. God rest Paul Berry. He was a very good manager. Yeah, he was a wonderful, vicious little monster. We'll miss him. Yes. Hawking's daughter, Lucy said, the sale gave admirers of his work the chance to acquire a memento of our father's extraordinary life in the shape of a small selection of evocative and fascinating items. And the article ends as Hawking's children hope to preserve his scientific archive for the nation. Christie's is handling the negotiations to hand it over to British authorities in lieu of inherited tax. Man, that was fascinating. Whew. So filled with excitement. So, what's the next story? This is an edition of the Historic News on Yesterday's News. Yeah, that's great. Yes, and on this edition of Historic News on Yesterday's News, we have an article, a short clip of an article by Alan Taylor, and this is from August 26th. 2015. Oh boy. And this is 20 years ago this week. A look back at 1995. 20 years ago this week, Microsoft launched its Windows 95 operating system, which would go on to sell tens of millions of copies in the first year alone. At the same time, 1995 World Aerobatic Champions were taking place in San Diego. Michael Jackson participated in his first online chat. TV News was covering the O.J. Simpson trial. A 19-year-old Tiger Woods won the U.S. Amateur Championship. Moscow opened its fifth McDonald's restaurant, and a lot of other events were happening. Collected here are news images from the last week in August 1995, 20 years ago this week. Well, that was pretty intense. That's a pretty notable day in history. Well, yes, on one on one on one picture they have Bill Gates with Jay Leno. Fascinating. Fascinating. They have, I think, what would be Times Square. I don't want to. That doesn't want. You know, some of these or historic news pictures, but I will get to one of them. What? Uh, well, actually, I'm going to get to none of them. <laughs> mm. Well, that was a historic story, wasn't it? That was a historic story, but they have, they have like, different pictures, and it is, it's a very good thing to check out. It's, it's at TheAtlantic.com. This is Yesterday's News with Joe Vexter and Curtis Bearhart. I'm Curtis Bearhart here. 
an emissary from the Elkinus Network, a parallel brand to the Joseph Vivaldi brand. We have lots of nice channels over there at the Elkinus Network. One of them is called Oakwood's Afternity. The first, it'll be for audiobooks, in case you're wondering. And the first audiobook on there is going to be called Malphoria, Volume 1. And that's by Richard Andrew Olkus and David Michael Lockwood Jr. And that's going to be coming out real soon. On, the, on another channel is Quantum Posey. That's the name of the channel. It's a spoken word poetry channel. And uh, we have the, uh, po the uh, spoken word CD, uh, Machinations of the Cybernetic Phantom God, featuring the poetry of uh, Richard Andrew Olkus and the uh, production of Bunny Stick. And last but not least, we have, sorry kids, a little bit of that uh, liverwurst and onions uh, bubbling up. And then you have uh, liverwurst and onions. What were you eating before? I just told you, liverwurst and onions. It's the greatest thing ever. They should make a liverwurst and onions museum. I I'd had go. liverwurst before, but onions up? I'm not a good thing. Well, no, maybe one day you'll wake up. We'll just have to wait. Maybe I'll see the light. Yeah, so uh, speaking of light and darkness, we have Temporality Shadow, ooh, which is a paranormal podcast on the Open Up Network. The host is a spirit radio, and the co-host reads in the spirit radio, and then you re uh, hear our recording of the sweep of the AM band, and then you get to play on the, on the speaker app, you get to uh, set it to slow playback to hear those sweeps and search with us for vocal anomalies. Are there spirits talking on there? Is it just rubbish? It's for believers and skeptics alike, so check it out. The Okanus Network. Audiobook. Poetry. Spoken word. Game design. Paranormal investigation. The talk. The Okanus Network. A creative baptism for every day. Speaker.com, iTunes, Amazon Kindle, and soon Amazon KDP. Normally, I would be talking about what Joseph Vivaldi wants me to talk about. But actually, I'm going to talk about what Richard Andrew Olkus and what Ricky want me to talk about. Really? Well, that's awful life, yeah. Yes, yes, they... They are great supporters of the brand, and Ricky has helped out the brand a lot. And these are their recommendations. Here with me thinking he was a fat bum. See, see. Whoops. <laughs> see. Oh, gracious me. The, the products that Ricky and Richard Andrews want me to... Fun. They were Spiritus Holographica and the Ricky and Wolfman show. See, those shows are very good. One consists of a parallel reality, parallel Earth, parallel analysts of many different possible. Parallel analysis? Parallel analysis, yes. Meaning, if you have U.S., it could be completely changed by one move. By the U.S., I'm assuming you mean the United States? Yes, the U.S., the United States. Meaning, what would happen if the South won the Civil War? Ooh. What would happen if The people from the Mayflower never got on to the Mayflower. Some shows like that. Hmm. Sounds riveting. Yes. He means parallel existence, kids. Alternate hologram. That's why it's Spiritus Holographica. And, and Ricky and Wolfman have fun doing... Ricky and Wolfman. 
Well, they watched Back to the Future. They watched uh, It's a Wonderful Life. They're going to watch uh, Twilight Zone. There's lots of stuff going on there. There's a lot. I even listened to that show. Yes, yes, that's a very good show. And and also, here's something that Richard Andrew Ocus wanted me to put. That was The Book of Seasons, The Journey Through the Year Cycle. Simply because he has written a very good forward for the book. Oh, really? That, that, that sounds nice. And I'll tell you, he took... Richard Andrews is a very busy man. Mm-hmm. He He's writing away. He's taking care of many things. He's running his network like Joseph Evaldi is. And he took the time and effort out of his busy schedule to put in the forward. Yep, yep, well. We, we appreciate it. Uh, what's, his, uh, what's his favorite quote? Uh, yeah, I can't think of it. It's eluding me. Oh, man. Well, you know, obsession is a uh, virtue if you're doing right. That's what he always says. Session is a virtue if you're doing right. And I would keep that close to heart. Well, it's about time, kids. Time to say uh, bye-bye. We had a lot of laughs, a lot of good stories, but all good things must come to an end. It was once said by a wise man, the truth is unknown but found. As we delve into the news, we find what many might not know. But as journalists, we report with the news with great integrity. And we leave you with yesterday's news. I am Job. And I'm Curtis the Bearheart. I mean Bearheart. See you later, kids. Boy, it was great. I couldn't believe it.